Welcome to the OC Show, guys. Tonight I'm here with Tool and Billzoid to discuss hey. about the latest news in hardware, overclocking, competitions, HWBot, and everything computer related, basically. So, without further ado, let's dive right into the weekly news because this week was quite interesting, both on the competition side and the hardware releases side because competition saw a huge change in rankings we finally saw the kings Denkop and extreme addict finally overwhelmed by some guy that i actually never heard of so <laughs> it was a greece guy named um uh, dollar sign at 39 at so <laughs> if if the guy in, in particular could tell us what's the pronunciation for his nickname, like an actual word, would be great. So we could refer to him probably. But jokes aside, he unloaded a shit ton of scores on the bot and he grabbed the first place. And you actually don't see it when you go on the front page of HWBot because you actually see the elite rankings, giving for granted that the elite are gonna have more points than anyone. But it seems like he's an extreme overclocker, so it's not an elite overclocker, and he's first by a bunch of points, like 40 points at least. And it was a huge, huge surprise to see someone that is not one of the known suspects being on top of the rankings. So what, what do you think of it, guys? Well, let's talk about the scores that were uploaded and the records that were broken. Well, I mean, yeah, he's just he's just gone on an absolute rampage. Just the sheer number of uh, just the sheer number of results he's dropped, and and you know, just the actual results that he's dropped are just it's it's crazy. I mean, he's literally come out of nowhere to, you know, dethrone uh, Dan Cop and Extreme Addict. But I mean, uh, yeah, it's 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 just it's 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 actually great to see somebody from the extreme league and he's not even from like you were saying he's not even from the elite league so that's just incredible you know um yeah i know dan cop's not going to be quiet and I, neither is extreme addict for a while you, i'm expecting scores probably today tomorrow from from the sandbag bag you know to some heavy duty scores to drop maybe if if, if, if they have some but yeah he's he's definitely done an extremely extremely good job with the scores that he's delivered you know even right the, he, he, uh, all his scores actually uh, with uh, with like you know, I mean if you actually study his points right if you actually study his points it's it's a it's an incredible mix of hardware so he's got you know scores from 2500s to 7700s he's benched just about everything you know old cards new cards he's got a lot of OC uh, OC sports points as well so he's definitely active everywhere and uh, yeah just amazing amazing job from him really you know, yeah, quite, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look but at that. The what really brought him up so high right now is he has one really, really good 1080 Ti over there. Yeah, yeah. He has yeah. a two point like it does 2.6 gigahertz for basically every single benchmark that is like heavy 3D, and then where then there's like GPU Pi where it does almost 2.9. Like, that card is absolutely freaking insane. And that's the... That's the Galax Hall of Fame 1080 Ti. Yep. Yep. I wonder if yes, that's the OC Lab flavor. <clears throat> but yeah, no, he's taken down 3D Mark Time Spy. He's taken down 3D Mark Fire Strike. Vantage. He's, taking, yep. um, he's 11. Catzilla. GPU you, Pi 1 billion. Like, yeah. You, um, yeah, you name it. He's have an extreme... It. Yeah, he, he basically crashed everything. Everything, so, uh, everything. Uh, many people it's, lost it's golden cups. Three D, yeah. And I think the the interesting thing is is, uh, Dan Cop and Extreme Addict. They don't really like. I know they can bench three D, and they've done it in the past. But you don't see them bench it that much. Like Dan Cop was recently celebrating. I think it was three D Mark O three. Oh, well, yeah, the, uh, one of the really yeah one of the old three D marks, which is ultimately more a CPU benchmark than a GPU benchmark. Vantage. But Vantage. and Vantage, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's like you don't you don't like most of them. If we like look at Dan Cop's breakdown for points, then it'll be a lot more CPU heavy than this, where this is pretty much carried by that ten eighty Ti. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
So I actually think it's going to be like, I don't think they're going to sandbag him out of his first place. That's Because I don't think Dan Kopp has a 1080 Ti that does 2.6 or even 2.5. Yeah. So... Uh, I mean, 10 10 global first places is is no joke. To do 10 global first places, that's just sickening. Well, well Kingpin has hasn't off. deployed the 1080 Ti yet properly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's that. I think if I think what's going to end up happening is Kingpin's going to start dropping his scores for the 1080 Ti Kingpin edition again. Yeah, and yeah. that's going to move um, the guy whose name we cannot pronounce <laughs> further <laughs> down because ultimately, like Dan Cop's current most powerful GPU is a Titan XP that does just uh, like that does under 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to compete with a 1080 Ti that does 2.6. And then Extreme Addict, like, you're you're looking at something, I think, pretty similar in terms of hardware. Now, Extreme Addict right now is pretty much entirely CPU-based. And really, yeah, so Extreme Addict basically doesn't have any gpu scores whatsoever in his global points yeah so I'm, I'm, I'm he's not that. gonna be taking down those 3d records that um guy with name we can't pronounce just made <laughs> I'm, expecting, I'm expecting big things from him though with the whole galaxy you know with the, with these uh hf cards finally beginning to reach all the top overclockers because i know Hazan's yeah. just about getting his uh, I'm, I'm betting so are all 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 the rest of them so Things could change because because this this isn't even on the OC Lab edition. This is just the regular Hall of Fame. I don't. The PCBs aren't that different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. actually, actually, the PCBs aren't at all different. I think it's just software restrictions in terms of what you can and can't do on the cards. Okay. And then one of the cards is not legal for the uh, Galax uh, qualifier. Yeah. That's the main differences between the cards. In terms of actual hardware, the cards should be pretty much identical. So I don't think we'll be seeing a huge difference between what guy with name we can't pronounce just did on <laughs> the regular edition versus what people will be posting up on the OC Lab edition. The guy needs to get a better freaking name. It's sorry. Yeah, like, what the hell is please, dollar sign at 39? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call him uh, Agent 39. Like, <laughs> inspired by Itman. I mean, with no, we could just go by what he's, uh, if you go, if you look at his H like his HW bot uh, profile link, it's just A39A. A39A. We, yeah. well, let's just use that. So A39A, yeah. um, I don't, I don't think there's going to be, like, his main threat is Kingpin. Because he yeah. took yeah. a lot of records that Kingpin tends to hold long term. One thing and, that I noticed is the fact that he actually farmed 1,000 hardware points. Those are difficult to get. Those like, are difficult he to get. benched yeah. a, a Nifi 2500K, a GTX 250, there is a 9800 9, GTX Plus with the rename and stuff. Okay, it's that one. But we're talking about really old, really old hardware, like a, a GTX 900, 9800, like 10 years plus hardware. Uh, yeah, it was 2007 when it came out, or maybe 2008. We're close to 10 years, so he knows how how overclocking works. And I think that even though Kingpin may be a threat to his course, to his rankings, he may be sent begging if he is really. Guy? Yeah. Yeah, but this is Kingpin. Kingpin doesn't care if you have sandbags. He can literally yeah, he, just keep bidding cards. <laughs> yeah. He, he, yeah, that's true. He steamrolls right. you, like literally. <laughs> Like, basically, you. it's not so much you're going up against Kingpin, you're going up against King B- Kingpin and the combined might of EVGA. <laughs> and Tin. <laughs> so, it's just like, no. <laughs> yeah, true. But, yeah, for, we'll for see, now, he's, we'll yeah, he's doing really good in terms of score, scores but uh, and hardware points as well. Though I know yeah. quite a lot of, there's a lot of Extreme League overclockers who have full 49 for their hardware points. Like, they have 49 pointers in every single... Everything, everything. Yeah, quite like, everything. Lumi yeah. had that a few times, and a lot of those guys, they'll farm XTU. Yeah, like, they'll even bench though. XTU on just, like, every single <laughs> I-5 and I-3, because it's so... There's so many XTU scores that you can get 50 pointers, and it's super easy. So, yeah, but... uh yeah. It's still, it's like, you know, for somebody in Extreme League to... 
to be able to get world number one, like, that's extreme. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. Extreme. Like, actually, before those benchmarks, there was, like, rare activities. Like, one, two months ago, there was a score. There wasn't much activity before this huge dump of scores, because it's actually a dump. I, I, I think he may have collected those in several days, like even several weeks. Oh, I'm There's sure. There's so many oh, scores. Sure. I mean, that can You can run 3D possible. Mark 11, 3D Mark Fire Strike, and Time Spy pretty much in succession. True. And but what on about the same the... system, because they're like heaven yeah but they yeah, use heaven four gpus to... for cpus so it's not well, that easy I mean, you mean the hardware use... points i think the hardware he's been on hardware bot for a long time though like this guy has joined or does it say yeah what, what what the news says is uh it's actually uh 20, uh, 20 uh, means he has the highest ranked score for 20 specific components. It's a case of 20 gold caps in a row. So I think he did it basically at once. We might look no, further mean, into this and get back. No, I mean, the, just the sheer number of scores on the hardware you bench, it's, 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 it's kind of difficult to do it all at once. He's, he's definitely yeah. taken yeah, well, definitely. Yeah, definitely. But that 1080 Ti, I don't think those scores are... That 1080 Ti, which is really carrying his uh, score right now, I don't think it's been spread out that much. Because you can bench a lot of those yeah. benchmarks, like, right, bam, 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 bam. Yeah, that's true. And that's also, true. they're all, like, there's several of them right on top of each other in terms of frequency, which pretty much confirms that. So... Yeah. Because well, it's I mean, like yeah, a lot of the just, 3D benchmarks, it's like you get the right settings and it's firing. And then you just run through just chain them. That's, that's, yeah, yeah, sometimes you'll true. crash on like physics or something when you just reboot and run the same settings and you, you'll pass eventually. So, yeah. yeah. But still a really, really strong showing because, you know, it, it's not easy to max out a 1080 Ti or any no, GPU. Not. No, and not. especially for 3D Mark, because it's not like 3D Mark is uh, really one of the hardest benchmark, like, really hard because you have to max out the gpu and the cpu you can't just sit yeah. sit yeah. there they being one part of the system so yeah re really impressive scores and achievements this Absolutely. is the voice and the voice but telling you let's and the voice is telling yeah, I, I can the people can hear me now i got the oh. this is true fun talking i want to actually give you something we know mm -hmm. how to pronounce his name it's saiga Saiga. Yeah, Saiga. Oh, so oh it's, it's an S A E G A. I suspected as much, but I wasn't sure how it was pronounced. So I got confirmation I from the, the Stravos. Name for shotguns. Yeah, I okay. got confirmation from Stravos from the uh, from the Greek uh, Greek country as well uh, from Greece. So yeah, thank you, Stravos uh, Stravos for t letting letting us know. So it's Saiga, yeah, not the name we cannot pronounce the name. I mean, the man with the name that's really... Tiger, okay, okay. Okay, back there to you guys. You okay. You're, you're no longer A39A, you're now saying <laughs> 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 We baptize you, and it's done. Uh, but taking a step back, uh, we're going to take a look at what uh, where everything starts for a normal clock. At the Rookie Rumble competitions for both the Rookie Rumble 46 and the Rookie Rumble 40 for AMD side that uh, actually finished this week's. Uh, it was actually a couple of days ago, so it's a fresh news, and we're gonna talk about who won. Can you tell us uh, more about these guys? Um, basically, the first place went to Protein, the second place went to Frito, and the third place went to Kava twenty one twenty six. This is for the uh, uh, Intel side of it. And if you look at the AMD side of it, um, first place went to um, a, a guy from Great Britain, Mozzie. And then second place went to Secret Dragon, and uh, third place went to um, Suffrage. So, yeah, I mean there was there, there were there were quite a few there were quite a few um, uh, uh, submissions at least on the Intel side. AMD not so much, but the Intel side had 357 overclockers, so that was pretty cool. Um, pretty nice spread. I mean, America has been the United States. They've been pretty pretty dominant uh, in both of them. Uh, most they've got. They've got guys in the top three, top five. Uh, yeah, so pretty well represented. Good job. And 
yeah, I mean, uh, a rookie number 47 is currently ongoing. So, if you guys didn't didn't really have like uh, time or didn't have a chance to take part in rookie number 46, 47 is already up and running. Go for it, guys. But, but yeah, 357 overclockers in rookie number 46. That's great to see. And if you actually look at uh, rookie number 47, that's actually going on right now. You've got You've got Scala83, who's in the lead on the on the Intel side of it. You've got Ant-Man 1, and then you've got Binjoy from India. Hey, this... Well, hey, I hi, have, buddy. Hi, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to get in touch. Um, but yeah, that's that's, that's pretty cool. Um, you've got fourth place is Simpac from Germany, and fifth place is Suffrage again. So he's taking part in quite a few rookie rumbles, which is good to see. Um, and then on the AMD side for Rookie Rumble 47, you've got Suffrage again, who's leading. So he's been busy, definitely. Um, you've got uh, Simon Mario 2, and then you've got Cypher 3, who's currently in third place. And Binoji's well, another, he's in fifth right now. So we have an Indian in top five. That's pretty cool, Rookie Rumble. That's, uh, that, yeah, that's actually good to see. And then, and then, and then, Alza is still running, so <clears throat> we've got Ralph in the lead, we've got Super, again, this is a name that's really hard to pronounce, but Super, Super Pato Super... Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah, thank you. The Italian and guy, then, yes. Italian. Yeah, and then, and then you've problems. Got... <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got uh, George Storm, uh, Stewart again, good to see Stratos I mean, Stratos has been busy anyways, he's actually in the top 10 in terms of competition points this year, so. He's been busy. He's pretty much everywhere. So, really good action even in Alza. Pro Protein is also here. So, looking good. Looking actually looking good. There's 20 overclockers uh, already, and uh, yeah, there's not. There's there's I mean yeah. There's not. There's no hurry really. They still have 17 days. So, I'm expecting good things here. And uh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, guys. Yeah, I mean. Um, the, in, Bill's right. I mean, uh, yeah. Since 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 you're with Alza, are you going to be taking part in this? Um, and how much time is left in it? Seventeen There's days. 17 days. I, I still might join. I'm not like I, you know. Ultimately, I don't enjoy competition benching very much because it's just <laughs> like the, the the whole case of I don't know if my score is good enough until the last two hours. I'm not like I don't enjoy that. You know, it's like, I, I want to post a score and know that it's good now, not in 15 days. In I don't three have hours. The, I don't have the patience to sit there going like, will they beat my score? Will they beat my score? Of course they'll beat your damn score. It's never high enough. So, um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, right now, I'm kind of focusing more on helping out uh, Team Alza for the Team Cup. Because uh -huh. there, it's like, kind of have to join, right? Being part of the team, it's... Yeah, it's it's a bit of a requirement, and I do have some hardware that like we're missing. So like the five nine sixty X is going up. Uh, I actually posted a score for that today, um, oh, which nice. I was just checking. Well, that was on water cooling. I was just checking that the thing runs. So actually, on Saturday, I might be mentioning that on LN two, um, oh, awesome. as well as working other scores because I also want to improve my go globals and hardware points. So since I'm yeah. already putting the five nine sixty X under LN two, I'll run it on, like I'll run it through a full range of benchmarks. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the also OC, it's, I have the hardware for it. It's just a matter of, I'm not sure, like, I, I, I'm more kind of interested in working on my, uh, global points right now, because they're kind of low. And then there's also Vega, which I'm still testing, and I just, I have a lot of stuff <laughs> to do. Yeah, I can imagine, so, I can imagine. You know, I, I might post some scores, but I'm not thinking of taking it seriously anyway. And at that point, it's just like I might as well not bother at all. Which no, just for <laughs> competition points, they still matter. Yeah, but they just they they no, disappear no. after a year, and it's like there's other competitions out there where I might actually put in full effort, and then it's just like, well, yeah, that's totally fine, totally understandable. We're PC people, so. And yeah, the, the the point where you said that the score is good now, not in 15 days, 
It's actually a great point of discussion, but I think we we might digress too much from the from the main <laughs> topics. But the sandbagging things, we we should make an episode sandbag themed, <laughs> just like <laughs> that would be insane, actually. Right, <laughs> but well, jokes aside, um, I think we pretty much said everything we could say about competitions for this week. Yeah. And of course, we're gonna wait for the next competitions to come up if there's gonna be any. We're going to discuss in the next episode what else is coming up during these days. Switching to what happened this week in the hardware-related world, Intel threw a curved ball because they basically uh, announced what's going to come after Cannon Lake, that is the successor to Coffee Lake that isn't even released. So they, they're basically doing, yeah, we can do a lot of stuff without actually... <laughs> saying when they're going to do those, because we knew that, yeah? Yeah, apparently, sorry, I'm so sorry, because I just read this. Apparently, they're saying uh, uh, Ice Lake is in 2019. Uh, So, two releases in 2018? No, well, it's just one. It's it's, Coffee Lake this year, Cano Lake next year. Yeah, Yeah, it shows that things are slowing down even, even further. Because of the process sides. Yeah, is, uh, I, hard to Intel was usually one release a year for mainstream. Uh, oh, it not. was two releases every 18 months. And lately they matched on the same year. Like in 18 months, it's like the last seven months, two releases. Yeah. Yeah. This year and was now, Cappy Lake and Coffee Lake on January and, and August. Think is, uh, I, I mean, before that, like, you had Devil's Canyon, which was one year, then was Haswell before that, which was again a year. Um, then uh, after was Haswell, Bridge. there was Devil's Canyon, Broadwell, and... Broadwell Skynet. doesn't count because they never released, like, it they made does. two CPUs. It, it doesn't. doesn't. They made two CPUs that never sold. Roadmap wise, it does. Like, it doesn't. It doesn't. Matter they literally went, this is trash, and released, uh, <laughs> what was it? Skylake, like, as fast as possible. Like, you when could only find numbers, Broadwell in laptops. They, when they literally numbers, went and admitted it's better. trash, the process doesn't work, so we only got Broadwell E out of that one. That was, like, the only finished version of Broadwell we got. And even that version sucked. <laughs> yeah. We, but, we know so I don't we really count the Broadwell as, like, a, a release, because, well, I mean, they basically went like, yeah, these, these exist on paper. <laughs> We're not selling them. <laughs> they suck too much. <laughs> yeah, OEM and stuff. Yeah, technically you're right, but technically they still consider it as a release. So Added. we gotta stick to what they say. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they they say that the the um, uh, the TikTok was released was um, substitute replaced by yeah, I know. a new a I new know, chain of I, I... events, the PAO, the Process Architecture Optimization. With yeah, the latest two architectures, we saw P A O O O, like Christmas. <laughs> P A Santa Claus. I mean, we only had Skylake and then KB Lake. Like that's and the revision of Sky. And we're getting Coffee Lake now, and Coffee Lake has a whole extra like that. That's pretty big jump, I think, because it does have the extra core, and they they seem to be claiming an IPC increase. So yeah, I don't they, think it's just KB Lake with... plus two. They did that too with uh, La- Skylake to Kaby Lake with the 15% more performance. Yeah, but Skylake was clocked lower, whereas Coffee Lake isn't. And they're claiming 11% more uh, True, single but, threaded uh, performance. What was, the, what was the generational leap that was 15% more performance and it was it just was only, in it was one only single under, benchmark? It was Passmark? only, I think, under... Yeah, I'm not sure what it was, but I know it was almost entirely because of the core clock increase. Yeah, like, we we, we gotta wait for the next week, so on Monday we're gonna know everything Coffee Lake, like, the the specs we've seen for Coffee Lake don't change uh, clock speeds. It's still 4.5 gigahertz turbo, and they're claiming a single threaded improvement. 11% or something, yeah. Yeah, Uh, which is probably under AVX, but I'd still say that counts as an actual core revision. So that would be a new architecture at that point. Uh, yeah. Well, the good, yeah, yeah, yeah. I so yeah, it doesn't make sense because they went P A O A with the fourteen nanometers was was broadly uh, already. Yeah. Okay. 
So Skylake. Yeah. The yes. architecture. So so because Broadwell is process P. Skylake is architecture A. Kaby Lake is optimization O. Then now they're changing architecture A. You, you got I, my point? Maybe? So the, they're going, oh, I, mean, I don't like, like I think any Intel reason. probably is just like the, they need to come up with some nice marketing term for in investors. And the reality of what they're actually doing in the labs is probably not even remotely similar to what they're like putting on the slides. Because even like Ivy Bridge, like going from Sandy Bridge to Ivy Bridge, there was a uh, there was a IPC improvement. Ivy Bridge is clock for clock faster than Sandy. Yeah. So like they were doing like under TikTok, it wasn't just oh we change the pro you know upgrade the manufacturing yeah, process. They did both. They did both yeah. every time. They just paid more attention to one or the other depending on which side of the cycle you were on. And now it's like okay, so you know I think well I think Broadwell E would still be part of was part of the TikTok, wasn't it? Because yeah, it was no, really Broadwell. No, no. It was part uh, of it, like the last one, like the last. Talk. Yeah, it would be the last talk then. And now, if Skylake was the start of architecture, wait, no, is it supposed see, to start with process? Is, we, we're missing think, the process. No, no I no, think. Wait, wait, still wait, I, wait. Let's, have, like, let's get hybrid. to it. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta solve this. Okay, so Broadwell E is both the talk for the for the previous uh, name and the P for the new name. Right, because talk is the process uh, shrink. So it was I don't, the P for. They haven't done like since they've announced this new process architecture optimization cycle. They haven't actually made a new process, so it's kind of hard <laughs> to say where this, yeah, this thing they, is supposed to start. They're gonna do it in the next year, as it seems, with Cannon Lake. Uh, yeah, because they're just gonna they're just gonna rehash it, just like how they did like. Sky Lake and Cabby, they're gonna do Ice Lake. I mean, Canon Ice Lake will be just a rehashed. Yeah, will be higher frequencies probably. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. there was a leak actually today, so we didn't really have a chance to put us put to put it in our docs for the show. But it seems like a distributor uh, event showed a, a leak where you could basically see all the improvements between the seventh generation with uh, Cabby Lake and the eighth generation that is coffee lake that is coming on monday and you could see an increasing course for every single cpu starting from the bottom to the top so <laughs> basically intel just adapted to the amd's strategy with four cores i3s uh it, w no. what are those four, four, core, four thread i3 six core i5 six core 12 thread i7 okay no. thanks well, it was I I the is. i7s are really interesting to me yeah, because I like mostly guys. because the AMD driver is weird. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, we shall see. We shall see. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, six cores on the low end. If they manage to keep the price identical, because yeah, they will. They, they will. may they may say yeah. MSRP is this, but you know, and resellers are not gonna stick to the MSRP. They're not sticking to the MSRP for Vega, not for Threadripper. <laughs> No, oh, that's AMD. Graphics cards. No, no, no. Even hey, no, but yes, that's miners. That's uh, everything, uh, basically. Like miners, AMD. There's like ninety percent. No, of no, the no, no. So here, here's the thing. Um, <laughs> AMD has a minor problem. So any GPU they sell, they can say say whatever the hell they want about the MSRP. It's ultimately demand driven uh, pricing at this point. Like yeah. unless AMD suddenly manages to produce like ten x more GPUs. It's gonna be more expensive than whatever AMD says the price is supposed to be, which you know. So that's never gonna happen. So AMD GPU prices are all over the place. But like historically, Intel hasn't had a problem with saying this is our CPU price and actually meeting that CPU price. It, it depends on the market, actually. Like uh, at least here in Europe, you know. Prices are fucked up depending on the country Look. they're selling in. Yeah, but that's ta that's country taxes and then the retailers that you have. Surprisingly, you know, it's like if, if you lived in, in in the land of freedom, <laughs> you wouldn't America. have a problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. Surprisingly, actually, 
agree the GPU prices in India have always been stupid. So I'm not going to talk about G- G- GPU prices regardless of NVIDIA or AMD. They've just been stupid here. But the CPUs have always been pretty much on on the button. And uh, this time, even with, with the 1950X, it's on the button. It's on the button. I can't complain. The, they're selling for exactly the same price. Intel sells their $1,000 CPUs for exactly the same price. So... Yeah. Unfortunately, here it's not like that. Like I saw a 1950X sold for almost 1,300 euros. Wow. It's, it's more than 250 euros over the MSRP. So they're trying to salvage as much as possible. I think from that's people just in- Italy because I have another Italian friend and he tells me prices from there and I'm like, oh, you're getting ripped off, aren't you? Yeah, um, that's, that's, that's actually daylight robbery because usually... 22% VAT, so... Yeah, that sucks. Right. Move to India, buddy. It's anyway hot enough there. It's cooler here. <laughs> yeah, at least you got the GST now. It should be a, a bit better. For yeah, the it is. Luxury things like CPUs. OCUK <laughs> is marking up the like the 1950X by only 27. Nine 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 eight point nine nine. Yeah, they're marking it up by 27 percent. And if I'm not mistaken, VAT here is like 21 or 20. It's some. I think it might be as high as 24. I haven't checked. So the eight in the U uh, in the UK should be twenty. So it's nine ninety nine plus plus VAT or is that VAT inclusive? No, that's VAT inclusive. It's twenty. It's twenty. All, oh, okay. So if you ignore the v, well, they don't do they don't list prices without VAT. Um, yeah, but technically, being still part of um, EU, you can buy from. I other mean, countries. the Czech Republic, I remember, was twenty one percent. We got 22, unfortunately. Like we are. So it varies from country to country. There's just like you can't go below. Okay, it is standard for uh, standard rate increase to 20% in 2012. So yeah, they're overcharging by 7%. I don't really see that a huge issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, The problem is when you convert uh, USD to euros, there's like a huge drop from that because we don't actually pay for for the electronic products import fees there's a there's a law that, that doesn't let you pay for import fees for electronic stuff so it's quite fuck up, fucked up here in italy let's <laughs> let's yeah you're straight. you're really getting ripped off if there's 1950 x is going if there's 1950 x's going for 1300 euros in your in italy then you're paying 1500 bucks which yeah. yeah, that's fifty percent over MSRP, exactly. but that's uh, yeah, actually, Italy there, being Italy. Up to 1400. That's, so yeah, the, yeah, that's the, just Italy being Italy. Live in a better place, <laughs> dude. Just drive, just like yeah. drive to a cheaper country, buy, come back. Yeah, it actually, you can just me. order from other countries that don't charge. I do, much. but they had the VAT that you're missing because we have high higher VAT from other countries. So the tiny amount that I will save would be fucked up by the difference of VAT. Like I try to look for one in uh, Germany, Austria, France, and basically the price is still 1100, while the price should be 1029. So it's still a lot of money, like 6% more. And I rely on that 6% because I'm paying those with my money. So even 1%, 0.5% would be important. But let's just we we digressed as usual. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, still speaking of Intel, uh, it seems like our prediction for the chipset names uh, was pretty pretty straight to the point because Intel seems like it's gonna be launching the B three sixty chipset, not the B three fifty, just like the AMD's one. So that's quite, that's quite funny, actually, because they had to change their strategy that they had for, like, since always. No, it actually was <laughs> just it was just with this release for the 100 and 200 series. But still, it's nice to see they're poking at each other with sticks, with name yeah. changes and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. It, what, I wonder what the Z chipset will be called. Will Z3 it be 370? Z380? No, nah, Z370. Z and X is not the same. I mean, X is yeah, better. But They're not the same. <laughs> X is better. And X399 is better than X299. Yep. 
he said yep at the same time and I almost choked on the water. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, let's switch side. We we spoke a lot about Intel, but let's talk about AMD, but not the CPU side, because Thread Reaper was quite covered last week on the last episode. If you didn't check the, that one, go on our YouTube channel. If you're looking on YouTube, you can go in the previous videos and you can check for the uh, episode seven. This is the eighth episode. But I digress. Uh, this week, Vega was finally announced in its gaming version, the RX Vega. So many reviews as usual. Uh, a lot of coverage videos on YouTube, YouTubers going crazy about the performance levels. And it seems that the Vega 64 actually has an increase in performance compared with, with the FE. Because the FE was suffering from some driver issues, maybe? FE runs the same driver as Vega. I'm using the yeah. RX Vega drivers on my FE and right now. Why <laughs> does it go better? It isn't. Nobody has an FE to test with. I can't find a single review testing an FE okay. against an RX. But Shh, uh, don't tell them we didn't. It's the same card. <laughs> we gave we gave them we gave them an idea for articles. Uh, we're gonna see Steve making a video on Game yeah, of Yeah, I'm thinking of asking him to do a test at FE versus RX, but I really don't think there's gonna be a difference because the RX and the FE run the same freaking driver. And the yeah, only difference is, block. is the RX cards have a much longer and more complicated boost. Uh, like the power play tables are different on RX. Um, and that leads to some very interesting uh, clock behavior when people try to overclock. As in, <laughs> I mean, tech power up, if you read their review, they just didn't overclock at all because it's com yep, it yep. was completely broken. It still has major, major issues. Good um, video also was same like they say they gave us overclock drivers and it was too late for the review to come up with overclocking results yeah but so it's just amd and overclocking i mean i was running plus 170 megahertz absolutely no problem and the memory was running fine and here's the funny thing i've had read a few reports of people running like 1980 megahertz on vega but, yeah, but there's a fun <laughs> little glitch with Vega, my card, my Frontier Edition, which has the shorter power play tables, right? I have a different power play system, so it's not the same issue. But yeah. my card will run 2 gigahertz on air while performing the same as at stock. Yeah, well, it was just a glitch. So basically, it's like I can basically the AMD, the, the, the longer RX Vega power play tables. They glitch out at higher free, like you can glitch out the frequency on it way earlier because my card will crash anywhere in between sort of 1700 and 1980. And then as you go over 1980, it starts running. Um, but RX Vega cards, I've heard people run 1800, 1900, and it's like, yeah, it's saying that it's running at that frequency, but the performance is closer to stock because every single benchmark I've seen with these cards at 1900 or these crazy overclocks. Um, don't, like, they're barely matching my, like, they're either matching my performance or they're slight, like, they're around the same performance I get at, like, 1685, um, with 1100 megahertz on the HBM2. And this was comparing against a liquid-cooled edition Vega 64, which actually has a top boost. Uh, that's another thing AMD changed, is, like, they're not marketing the full boost speeds for Vega. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you actually look at the power play tables for Vega cards, the say the liquid cooled edition has a 1750 peak boost yes so the thing is is that 1750 peak boost is like that when like i was discussing with a one of the people who actually reported their card running 1980 and i uh -huh. like i called them out that like no way um and if it is actually running 1980 go beat my 1800 score off of uh, 1800 megahertz score off of liquid nitrogen yeah, yes. and basically they're scoring right around what I would expect for 1750. So it's basically if you're seeing ridiculously high clocks, they're just broken. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now overclocking is super, super glitchy on the RX cards. The Frontier is, cards yeah. are fine, except they clock worse. And I think the liquid cooled edition cards are actually, uh, well, AMD actually names the chips something different. It's the XTX chip, and that one does seem to be a significantly better bin. So, so I don't. I, I really want to get my hands on a liquid cold edition for that reason. 
so did you did you see the card I have? It was that mini PCB, the tiny weirdo. Yep. Yeah. So that one surprisingly, it was doing. So I did manage to clock it, and the results I've got, like I will publish them in a bit. But yeah, I saw I. I didn't see maybe the improvement that I wanted to see for 150 megahertz overclock, but there was definite improvement. So something's working. It's not completely broken, but yeah, that, no, no, yeah, 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 no. It's because that's what I like. The guy who posted that 1980 overclock, he yeah. also showed that it actually improved from stock settings. But I think what happened is he basically went and the card sort of went from not hitting that 1750 boost to yeah. actually hitting that 1750 boost because 50 his 50 performance boost. went up enough that it would reflect a 1750 boost clock, which his stock performance wasn't reflecting the, the peak yeah, boost that yeah. the BIOS is configured for. So, so I'm, I'm going to say basically... Running, I think 1640 or something like that, or... 50, well, no, 1600. I, I can't remember. Yeah, There's 70, a thread on overclock.net where all the different boost speeds are listed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's overclocking right now on the RX cards is a bit wonky. It's a bit it's a bit wonky. Yeah. yeah. And the funny thing is, with mine, I guess it was early drivers of the BIOS that the car had. But every time I'd crash with uh like really hard overclock, I'd, I'd like literally have to like drain the system for like. Oh, mine does that all the time. It take like actually I think for AMD cards that's kind of been the norm where they take down the whole system with them. <laughs> I, like I'm really like when I overclock I Nvidia cards, it's like whoa. It crashed and I don't need to restart. What is this? This is a miracle. <laughs> Whereas with AMD, it's like, oh, take it. Oh, it's black screen. Just cut oh, the AC power and I got a format. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah no. I mean, I, almost. I, I'd actually hit reset and get no display. It's like the GP was locked in whatever TZ dog state. Yeah, actually, then. yeah, you sometimes get some weird stuff. Weird stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, but uh, yeah, other like, than that, early days, or, or, early days, and overclocking is a bit sketchy. It is yeah, sketchy, especially because AMD recently completely reworked the overdrive API. Yeah, Afterburner recently completely broke uh, on one of the newer drivers, and uh -huh. that was because AMD changed the overdrive APIs. They added a whole second API, and so there's like, yeah, Afterburner needed an update to hook up into the new one properly, and. Newer cards basically lost functionality in Afterburner for a bit. So, yeah, I mean, the thing, it's, Maybe it's, it's because just of like, Vega. AMD is just like, I, their intentions are, I, I can see some intention of making overclocking work. <laughs> the execution, the execution means a lot of freaking work, though. Because <laughs> it's just like, what man is, you know, there's oh, a lot man. of people who use it. It's just, for me, it's always been just like, it's bad. It's I don't always like it. been bad. Sometimes That's it's not bad. That's how an OC tool should be. It's, just it's too complex. It's just all over the place. It's too big. I mean, no, it, that's yeah, just it, not how. There was a yeah. time when Wattman would like use. There was a like it was overuse system resources. Like run having Wattman open would like massively tank performance. Yeah, yeah. Which is just like, does nobody test this stuff? Hasn't I saw this all the time and I would just scratch just my head like, and I'm like, dude, I shut this off and I'm like, hmm, performance is back. I, I keep I keep monitoring on or even just that on just for temperatures or whatever. And it's just hell. Yep. yep. It's just like, yeah. And and before we had Wattman, we had Overdrive. And Overdrive yeah. had all the same <laughs> issues Wattman has, <laughs> except it had less functionality in it. So... You know, at least there's some progress because they do give you the control over more of the DPMs. That's RGB. Because um, <laughs> the, the charts are RGB with RGB lines. Overdrive That's... didn't have charts. I know, I'm talking about um, Wattman. Yeah, he, but the, it, the it is has RGB cool. charts. <laughs> uh, I don't really like, you know, you need to distinguish the lines somehow. You can't just have four black lines going oh, over the. Oh, God, it's a joke. <laughs> I'm dense. Guys, he doesn't get jokes. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry for him. I'm not sorry for me. I'm sorry for him not taking sarcasm. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Vega is still fucked up. I was pretty no, disappointed. The performance is good, man. The performance is actually good. Like, with Vega 56. Power consumption. So I spent, I spent a good two days <laughs> testing the damn thing, man. Like... It's not bad. Yes, the power consumption is is high, is higher. Yeah. But I mean, it's not bad at all. It's it's really not bad at all. I 
if you if you have a setup of monitors that Nvidia won't drive because there's a lot of those like mine yeah. where yeah. I have an ultra wide in the middle and two normal monitors on the sides like I can't use an Nvidia card with this it won't let me merge the displays true um, you need a quadro yeah <laughs> I need a quadro <laughs> no way Nvidia no thanks. but uh yeah, no, so I'm pretty much stuck on AMD cards. Then there's people who have FreeSync monitors. They're kind of stuck on AMD stuck cards. Stuck on AMD cards, exactly. Um, and the the main issue with Vega right now is actually finding a card you can buy. The Vega yeah, 56 hasn't yet re hit retail. That one's still a few on days 28th. out. Yeah, it's on the 28th. But Vega 64, um, have you seen the scalpers on eBay? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh yeah, my the cards God. are going, for those that are not informed about it, the cards, the Vega 64 cards, like the basic plain black ones, not the limited or liquid gold ones, are going for the whooping price of 14 to $1,600 each. So you could buy three of those, almost. It's stupid. It's stupid. Yeah. yeah. And that was a what, huge shortage, the, despite the, AMD the saying, crazy. no, we've got the numbers. They're not even good cards to mine with. They're horrible cards to mine with. Uh, yeah, they're no, they're not. They're the, forty mega hashes, and you can't yeah, mod you, the BIOS at all. You can't touch the BIOS, <laughs> like yeah. literally. You so much as like we actually on Overclock.net, which I didn't know until earlier today, but somebody on Overclock.net managed to actually try an XTX BIOS, a FE BIOS. Like they pulled a bunch of different Vega BIOSes, right? And they yeah. ran them through their card, and it refuses to boot with any of the BIOSes that aren't originally meant for that chip. Well, like those wow. cards, will, you can't even take an XTX BIOS and put it on the XT, even though See, they're technically sucks. the same 64 yeah. chip, right? Yeah. They're yeah. Vega 64 and Vega 64 Liquid Edition. You can't take the Liquid Edition and put it on the regular air card. Oh, it that's absolutely, boot. that's, that's yeah. very true. Because that's something I that's confirmed with AMG actually. when I was testing those cards, because I was like, hmm. One guy says XTX, one guy says XT. What the what the hell is going on here? And then I and, and, and then I went into how to monitor and saw that okay, this one's definitely a, a Vega 56. I was like, I'm wondering. They both, you know, they both look kind of the same. Can I just swap BIOSes? And I remember you messaging me that I've got the ATI Flash tool. Do you want to try something? So I was like, huh. This guy, I have the AMD guy sitting right here. I'll just ask him. I was like, can I just swap? <laughs> and he's like, no, it's not going to boot. <laughs> it's just not going to boot. And yeah. Like, so basically, if you're a miner, you're screwed. It's <laughs> screwed. It's screwed. Because <laughs> it's going to, like, you can't flash the BIOSes. There are some ways to play around with the cards on, like, Linux and, and in software. But it's not like you're, like, I, I've helped set up one of a mine, like, I helped with BIOS modding for a mining operation. And it's literally yeah. a case you set up one BIOS and you throw it on every single card you have yeah, from exactly. the same manufacturer. You don't yeah. want to be configuring every single, wind, uh, like, operating system installation for the, every single card. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And th that's ignoring the fact that Vega only, like, even on the AMD dri uh, mining optimized driver, it only does 40 mega hashes. Yeah, right? yeah. And it pulls away. It's 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 still pulling close to 300 watts. It's still pulling close to 300 watts. If you get if you get a 580 that has Samsung memory, you can do almost 30 mega hashes for a fraction of the power consumption of Vega. Exactly. Hey, 1070s. I'm yeah, getting but like not 30. a fraction of the price. <laughs> but <laughs> like, still, they're you, still going for the power, 600 though. plus euros here. But, but fraction of the power though. Yeah, I know, but... No, but um, look, if you're a miner, you can have one Vega or you can have two 580s for the same exactly. price. Exactly. From the same power, not the same price. What? At least not here. For the same power, because... No, I'm because talking mining, on eBay. I'm talking about the scalpers on eBay. You're paying $1,400 for oh, one okay. Vega. Okay, you're paying okay, okay, okay. $1,200 for two 580s. Buy okay. the 580s. They have yeah. more... They, they're going to get you more hash rate, ultimately... Because I mean, even the worst 580 is going to be like 20 mega hashes, and you can still optimize those up to 25. Yeah. Uh, or close to 25. So if you have two of those, that's 50 mega hashes. That's already more than that single Vega card ever would do. Because you can't optimize a Vega. You can't touch the memory timings. Um, and, um, it's just... Because, because also it's entirely like, because of that rumor about Vega doing 70 mega hashes. 70. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, a bunch of people it. were I like, ooh, I'm going to be rich. I get, 32, uh, I get 32 <laughs> mega hashes on a 1070. 
and I mean, I can buy 1070s all day long at like $550 or like 500 between $500 and $500. I can buy them all day long. So, the, so, so, it, it's a little bit expensive here, yeah, but I mean, at least they're available and the power consumption, I'm at 120 watts. I'm at 120 watts and I'm getting 32 mega hashes. So, I'm True. really yeah. not, you know, so the point is for eight more mega hashes, so much more power and such, a, and you know, in terms of pricing, especially availability and the way they're going in terms of price. Th these cards don't make sense right now for mining. Mine will stay away. Yeah, but on the, on the bright side for miners, because they were <laughs> really disappointed with Vega. Okay, guys, this is this is run time. Okay, I'm I'm gonna run so much about AMD now, and you know I like AMD's policies for users and stuff. But AMD made a uh, mining specific design driver. Now. AMD with Vega was pretty straightforward. We're gonna make uh, Radeon packs so you can buy Vega cards and miners won't bother you. And then they make a mining specific driver. Why? I'm asking why? Why doing such a push? Have you seen any 580s in retail? <laughs> Do you know what that means for AMD's profit margins? Yeah, but at least don't be <laughs> hypocritic and say, yeah, Vega is... Yeah, Vega for is for gamers, and the 580s, 570s, 480s, 470s are for miners. <laughs> that's that's it's very simple. Because they 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 say no, we don't like miners. We want gamers to have cards. Then they go just like, oh, money. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> Let's make honestly, a mining honestly, drive. Honestly, Chiro, you don't have to worry about it because no no miner is gonna buy that card at 300 watts and get 40 mega hashes and say, yeah, I'm making money. No. Yeah, but still they there's no they mega are, cards they, to be bought. They're going to they buy 1070s. Them. Yeah, they're going to buy 1070s or something else. Because just the 300 watts is, it puts these cards just off the table for mining. 300 just, on paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. 300 uh, TDP, not 300 power consumption. <laughs> yeah, That's I mean, but, it, yeah, well, but, historically, AMD has managed to exceed their TDP. Exactly. I was just correct. So, just like yeah, the explanation like... I sent you this week, the difference between thermal TDP and power. Yeah, 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 yeah. But honestly, honestly, even when e so okay, so when we were testing, also I was seeing overall system power draw closing in on 380, 390 watts, 400 watts plus. When I was trying to you know run benchmarks for like mining and. I was getting what 36 mega hashes, 37 mega. So I'm willing to bet at that point that if the system's using, I mean, the GPU's at least using 280 watts out of that. And that means that, yeah, these cards don't make sense for mining. Yeah, they don't. Actually, to be completely honest, those cards don't make sense, period. <laughs> but I mean, maybe that's, gaming, too, fine. that's being for, too strict because. For gaming, yeah. they're fine. For, for gaming, yeah, look, but the point fine, is that they're fine, not. That they're good, because I, 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 I'm honest. I'm, I wasn't expecting a 1080 Ti competition. I wasn't no. expecting that at all. But price-wise, power consumption-wise, things are not looking great for AMD on the GPU side. I mean, maybe Agreed. Mega 56 is the best card, like literally the best card, after, uh, even mm. better than the 1070, and that card has a really great price-to-performance ratio. Yeah, and that's it the doesn't, one. That's it the doesn't one. use much power. That, 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 uh, it that's performs the one. really closely, as Pilzoy said in many videos, it performs really closely to Vega 64, despite being the, the, the small chip. So, Vega 56 is going to be the card. Like, there's a possibility that there's a shortage of Vega 64 just because they focused on making Vega Honestly, 56. I think AMD doesn't want to sell Vega 56s at all. I think if you th if you think Vega 64 is rare, Vega 56 is going to be a unicorn. It depends on how they managed it. Like, uh, no, if it's like, like the 290X, like, where they had to cut chips from the 290X to make 290s. Or if the it's thing the is, opposite. The thing is, making a 290 didn't cost anywhere near as much making any Vega card does. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Vega, you've got HBM2, which is because... NVIDIA really nailed it by not using HBM2 as much as possible, yeah. right? 
they pretty much made sure that HBM2 is niche as hell because yes, they're not I, using it on anything except their super well, quadro uh, like JP100 JP100 and JV100 are the only HBM2 chips yeah the, the, so, the Teslas well, Teslas and Quadros. There's Quadros. Teslas and Quadros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the IS. So basically, they've made sure that the they don't need a high volume of HBM, right? AMD basically decided, oh, we're not gonna we're not gonna charge royalties or anything on it's HBM thing. because we wanted to go mass mass volume so that we can get away with having terrible GPU core power efficiency. Problem is, Nvidia doesn't use that much HBM. AMD does. AMD uses pretty much all the HBM that is available right now because yeah. Nvidia doesn't make that many cards with it. And the problem is that since HBM is so low volume, it's also insanely expensive. And that means AMD really doesn't want to sell you a Vega 56. They want to sell you a Vega 64 with two games bundled to, with it as well. Because if you haven't noticed, there's uh, pretty much like there's no, uh, there's like the vega bundled with the two games which costs more than a vega alone the vega alone cards are gone they're not like there's not supposed yeah. to be any more going out to retailers at this point and yeah, the there was actually that, a yeah. rumor there was actually yeah. a rumor this week like uh it according to some retailers some users that have eaten source and stuff it seems that amd's launch price wasn't actually the final retail price. No, it was. I, it was a retail price for an the problem Omega is card, they are done, which yeah, they're they, not going to sell you because they don't exist. They made, yeah. they, they shipped very few Vega cards in a box on their own. If you want a Vega, from this point onwards, you need to buy a Vega with two games bundled in, and that so costs extra. Bucks more. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you could, uh, let's be honest, you could get those games on G2A, like for 30 bucks, both of them. There's no yeah. need to pay 100 more for two games that you won't even actually play if you don't like FPS. And there's many people not liking FPS games on PC. That's not weird. So, yeah, it was kind of a, a low hit from, from AMD. I mean, okay, everyone's on the market to make profit. But they are not in the position to be that noticeably uh, looking for profit. That's what I'm I'm saying. Like uh, they should have managed as usual. Marketing team from AMD sucks. It's been the same with Ryzen. It's been the same with everything. I think they nailed Ryzen pretty much. Like Ryzen is yeah, a runaway right. success because Ryzen, unlike not Vega, really, kind of doesn't really at the launch. Yeah, not not at the launch though. Yeah, but that was like, because Ryzen on launch cool. sucked. <laughs> yeah, that's like uh, everything was broken on launch. Like you don't fix a bad product with a marketing. Yeah, but team, it, it wasn't unless you're that. Apple. It was also it was also many other things because they they advertised Ryzen as a gaming CPU, like a well, really. A 4K gaming CPU, when, if you compare the Well, scenes, technically a toaster is a 4K gaming CPU. <laughs> if your GPU is slow enough, you can play on an FX CPU. <laughs> that's right. That's what I'm so, talking about. I mean, I mean they, they, 4, 4K they forced, gaming? Sure, knock yeah. yourself out. I don't have a problem with that. Just don't say it's good for 240 hertz, because it's not. Or 144. Or Fire Strike, as I recently found out. Vega bottlenecks on the 1700 at 4 gigahertz. Hard. Really? You lose like yeah. You co it costs you like two K graphics score. Jesus. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Like on Fire Strike, which is just like I know Fire Strike, like it's running at like a hundred to hundred and sixty FPS at that point. But I'm like, that's still not that fast. Not to enough. Costing me. But well, actually no. On Ryzen, it doesn't hit that hundred and sixty. It hits like well, it tops out at like one thirty peak FPS, and then on uh, when I moved it to a 6950X, it peaks at 155-ish at oh. the same settings. So, that's yeah. A lot. That's a lot. That's 20%. Like, at least 20%. Well, it's peak FPS. Like, your lows are okay. the same. Your lo Like, your average FPS doesn't change that much. It's just like, you get a bottleneck. It's like Unigen Heaven has the yeah. biggest CPU bottleneck in the scene which goes to like 700 FPS. Yeah, yeah, of course. If you have enough CPU to actually see 700 FPS, yeah. that's the main problem. So yeah, it's 
Uh, also, there, there were there were plenty of articles and posts on Reddit as slash r slash AMD for the power cost of a Vega card during an year. Like there was the price chart for electricity in the uh, in the world, and Australia was really fucked up, and Italy is in the third place by electricity costs. So that's why mining is not a thing here. <laughs> it's the third place, more, it's third most expensive place to buy current electricity. So yeah, that sucks a lot. But guys, we had a nice chat on Vega and everything that was announced this week. We took a look at all the competitions that took place in these days on HWBOT and OC Esports. We, that said, we're gonna close the show and get right to the after party we, where we're gonna answer your questions and have a nice chit chat with you and everything an after party is. Uh, it was